T-minus 30 seconds. We are go for launch. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the NASA Social for the Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the virtual NASA social for the Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station. If you're just joining us for the first time today, we want to tell you a little bit more about the launch that is currently scheduled for November 14th at 7.49 p.m. Eastern Time. So back in May, you might have watched as astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley launched to the International Space Station aboard the Demo-2 mission. So that mission was kind of the last step in certification for SpaceX to fly astronauts uh, regularly to and from the space station. And what that means is that they've been working with NASA for several years now to ensure that um, their capabilities are safe and reliable to fly crews to and from Earth. And so Crew-1 will actually be the first mission where SpaceX is certified to regularly fly crews to and from the space station. Um, also, if this is your first time joining us, we want to let you know if you have questions throughout this program, you can go ahead and drop them in the YouTube chat and we may just answer them live. So we have a really awesome guest with us today. Um, she is a lead design engineer for the commercial crew program. Uh, so I'm going to toss it out to my colleague, Allison. She is at the Launch Complex 39 observation deck and she's going to be chatting with uh, Sam Testa about her role within the program. Thank you, Madison. Yes, I'm NASA communicator Allison Tankersley, and I am live at the gantry with lead design engineer for astronaut centrifuge training, Sam Testa. Sam, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's been a pleasure. Now, can you please tell us what is astronaut centrifuge training as a whole? Yes. Astronaut centrifuge training gives the crew the chance to experience what launch and reentry is going to feel like prior to day of launch. So they'll go through up at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, a centrifuge training experience consisting of launch, reentry, landing, and an abort profile for their SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. What you can see right now is Victor getting suited up in a mock spacesuit, and he'll make his way over to the gondola portion of the centrifuge, where he'll get strapped into his seat, the door will be closed, and he'll be ready to spin. That truly sounds like a very immersive training experience. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. So this is just one of the many trainings that the commercial crew program goes through before they get on for their mission. Yes, they train for um, up to years to get ready for the missions that, that they'll be flying, especially this one up to the International Space Station, where they'll be performing science and research that'll eventually help us get us to uh, the moon and Mars. Well, it all is truly exciting. Can you tell me a little bit about how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, I have always wanted to work at NASA. It's been a dream of mine since about third grade. And I had a really supportive family who um, helped me get into STEM programs and you know support projects I would do at home. And I was lucky enough in college um, to get an internship and then eventually a full-time job here at the Kennedy Space Center. Well, that's awesome. And we are so thrilled you were able to follow your dream and end up at the Kennedy Space Center. We do have an Ask NASA question what are you looking forward to most about this mission? Great. Oh, I'm looking forward to having a full crew of four astronauts who are launching to station for the first of many launches with our, our SpaceX partners. Um, you know, they'll be up there for about six months, and this crew is really great. We got to spend a full day with them when they did centrifuge training. They were a lot of fun. We really enjoyed spending time with them, and we're really excited to see them launch. They've been looking forward to it for a very long time. 
So you did do the centrifuge training with these astronauts that are going up? Yes, um, I was there with a couple of them. I was actually um, away for, they didn't come together as a crew as they usually do. Their schedules are very tight, so we have to fit it in where we can. Um, but I was there with Victor and a couple others um, when they did their training day. Awesome, and I heard word on the street is you actually got to do this training. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I did, yeah. Um, I'm also the test subject for the project along with a couple other of my um, colleagues who are on the program. And we were able to do the full experience. It's about 40 minutes in the centrifuge. Um, um, following from launch all the way through the abort profile and it's it's quite a ride <laughs> I bet so would you say if it was me that'd be my favorite part but what's your favorite part that is about, my favorite that part. was it yeah absolutely getting to ride the centrifuge and then work with the crew and we have such a great team of, of engineers and doctors um, we have some crew who are actually on the team with us um, it's just it's a great experience it's one of my favorite projects I bet. And we do have a question on social. How important is it for the crew to practice in these simulations? It's hugely important. Um, being able to experience launch and reentry before they get into their capsule not only gives them the chance to practice and prepare for what it's going to feel like when they're under intense G-loading, um, but it also gives them a chance to get a little bit more comfortable with the environment and give them that experience to take away that little bit of extra worry that they may have before they launch. And what advice would you give then to anyone who is interested in a career like this? Um, how did you get to be this specific position? Oh, follow, follow what you want to do. Don't let anybody, you know, tell you that you can't do something. If you want it and you work hard enough, you can absolutely get there. And I was lucky enough to have the support system to get to where I am. You know, I've always been a little bit more mechanically inclined. I went to school to be a mechanical engineer um, before I, I started working here. And one of the best pieces of advice I think I've ever gotten is if you get an opportunity to always try and take it, uh, because you never know where it could lead you somewhere down the line. Yeah, I think that's advice I hear all the time at NASA is just say yes um, and see where you get to go with these opportunities. Yeah. And that's follow up to we have a viewer, Heidi. Um, what can you share with my twin daughters about the best route of engineering or piloting for space? Oh, the best route. That's a good question. I don't know that there is a best route. I think that a lot of people come into these jobs looking for, you know, one way to get to where you want to go. And I think that there are always multitude of paths to get you there. Um, mine was just one of many. I have many friends who are also lead design engineers who studied electrical or software engineering. Um, you don't have to be mechanical to get to this type of a job. Um, you just have to work hard and, and take control of the opportunities that are presented to you. And that is great advice. And so you've done the centrifuge changing. Is it something you get to do again? Yes. Um, we're actually going to be there in spring of next year with Crew 2, who will be also launching with SpaceX on a Crew Dragon. Awesome. So you get to do it more than once. But how many times do the astronauts do it before they go? They get to experience the centrifuge um, just for that one day uh, because their schedules are so tight. So they get at least one full round of training. And sometimes if we have extra time, they're offered to. Um, and they would do it as many times as we would allow them to, <laughs> trust me. But uh, because their schedules are so tight, it's really just one day of training. Well, that's, I'm sure, a very full packed day. And that's exciting that they want to do it again and again. I think that really speaks to their passion about the job. Yeah, fun fact. Um, if you've ever been on Disney World's Mission to Mars ride, you've actually ridden the same type of centrifuge that the astronauts use during this training. The company that built the Disney ride also built the Wright-Patterson centrifuge. And have you had any, like, was there any crazy stories of any reactions after riding the centrifuge? No, Anyone no. Moments? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no one's gotten sick, thankfully. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit of an unnatural feeling. You know, it's definitely a crazy ride, but um, no one's gotten sick. Everyone's had a really good time. And I think the uh, most interesting comment we've gotten is from astronaut Eric Bow, who said that the GX experience felt like a small elephant was sitting on his chest. <laughs> I can imagine that feeling, um, and maybe I'm not cut out for the gig. But I do <laughs> want to know, has anyone gone into the centrifuge training that has already been to yes. space? Yes, yeah. What did One they say the about it? They thought um, that the training has gotten much better. You know, we start with a testing point with a generic profile, and then we've been moving into a more um, realistic profile as we get data from the flown vehicles. Um, and this last centrifuge training was our highest fidelity yet, and we got really positive feedback from the crew who have flown um, both from shuttle and on the Soyuz, um, saying that it was very realistic and that they think it's going to be a very positive training for the crew to experience prior to day of flight. Awesome. I'm sure that speaks to you and your team. You love to hear that.
it's an amazing team of people and it couldn't be done without any of them. You know, this team is really a, a very high functioning group and I'm absolutely honored to be a part of it. And we have another question from NASA Social. What is your personal next goal? What's after this? Oh, so that's a good question. Um, my ultimate goal personally is to be an astronaut myself. I just applied to the crew, um, the crew call in uh, late last year, I believe, is when it came out, or early this year is when it started. Um, but unfortunately, because of COVID, they are on pause with the program right now to um, be accepting new candidates. However, they are hoping to reopen it in spring of next year, um, where you know, I'm one of 12,000 who applied. So it's really just keeping my fingers crossed and we'll see, but that would be my ultimate goal. Well, that's a big next step, but I think you're on the right track <laughs> with the training you've got going on. You've already done the simulator. So that's awesome. Uh, and I think that's testament to just, you know, always following what comes next at NASA, just saying yes to things. You're going after your dreams and we love to see that here. Um, we did have one question, though, specifically on what did you study in school? I was a mechanical um, engineer in college. I went to Villanova University up in Philly. Um, I did my undergraduate and my master's degree up there. That's awesome. So just one of the many degrees you can get for a job like this. Yeah, there's all kinds of different engineering degrees. And um, if you decide to go and be an engineer, you know, take your time to figure out what type of engineering is right for you and, and make sure that you really love it. And do you have any advice for the younger kids who are still maybe in middle school, high school, preparing, they're not at college yet, what should they do to find out what they're interested in STEM? There are a lot of great you know, youth programs and student programs out there for kids who may uh, be interested in STEM. You know, there's a lot of science and math involved, but um, if, if your school doesn't have something, make sure you do your research. You know, NASA has a lot of student programs that you can engage in, um, both in person and online. So even if you don't live near a NASA center, they have programs for you. Well, Sam, it's been great speaking with you today. I have one final question that I love to ask everyone. Where will you be watching launch from? Oh, I'll be at home, sitting in front of my TV, just holding my breath, watching this crew launch from uh, here at 39 on uh, Saturday night. Well, that's so exciting and such a good thing to note, too, that, you know, even if you work at NASA, so many of us are watching it from here, from TV, from the Internet, and it's just important to be a part of it in any way you can and experience it on whatever platform you can. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Sam, for joining us. We are live at the gantry. I'm Allison Tangersley. I'm going to throw it back to you, Madison. What can our viewers expect next? Thank you so much, Allison, and thank you, Sam, for joining us and answering some viewers' questions. Uh, so if you are as excited as I am about the launch, you want to note down this time in your calendar. Uh, tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, that's November 14th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, you can head to www.nasa.gov backslash live for the beginning of our live launch coverage. If you joined us for the Demo 2 launch back in May, you might remember um, you'll get to see the the crew kind of get their final uh, suit checks. You'll get to see them walk out of the astronaut crew quarters and then make their way to the launch pad ahead of launch, which is currently scheduled for 7.49 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you all so much for joining. Stay tuned for our final show today, uh, which will begin at 4.30 Eastern Time. It's a really awesome show talking with some students who have an experiment that will actually be flying on board the mission. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you later this afternoon.